Hey, this is Kip, and in this video, we're going to look at the latest updates to the G1000 NXI mod by the working title team. It's now in version 050, and yes, they did skip 040, so it went from 03 to 05. So make sure the first thing you do is go to your content manager within the sim itself to update the mod to the latest version. And if you don't have it, go to the marketplace and search for G1000 to find it. The first major fix is with the ILS approaches. It'll now automatically tune to the localizer frequency of the ILS you've chosen. It does that when you load or activate the approach from the procedures menu. And second, it'll automatically switch to use the localizer as your navigation source. And this will happen when the final approach fix is the active leg of your flight plan and you're within 15 miles of the final approach fix. If you're using autopilot, don't forget to arm approach mode so that it's ready to capture and follow the glide slope when it gets to the final approach fix. Next up is an important change to autopilot and how nav mode works. So now there's actually criteria that need to be met before nav mode will activate. You can see here I've activated nav mode and if I look over at the enunciator here, it says GPS in white instead of in green. Heading mode is still active. And that's because I'm really far off of where my intended course is. You can see it's all the way behind me. So what I need to do is actually fly to get close to intercepting that course before navigation mode will actually activate. So you could fly to your course manually and then turn on autopilot and enable navigation mode. Or what I'm doing here is using heading mode to let the autopilot fly us close enough to the course and then it'll automatically switch over to GPS mode since I had that armed and on standby. Next, we have a hold at waypoint feature. So if you use the MFD and choose one of your waypoints by highlighting it, then hit the menu button and then scroll down using the FMS knob to hold at waypoint Hit enter and it'll bring up this new hold panel. Here you can choose your inbound or outbound course. You can choose whether it's a timed hold or a distance based hold. And then you can also specify a turn direction, which will normally be right hand turns. Once you're finished entering the hold information, scroll down to where it says load and then hit enter to add the hold to your flight plan. You can now see that it has a new line that's called hold right after the waypoint we're holding at. And the map will also be updated to show the hold entry and the hold pattern that you'll be flying. Now, once you're in a hold, the GPS stops automatically sequencing to the next waypoint. It'll just keep you in the hold until you go over to the PFD. Here you can see it says suspended. And when it's in suspend mode and you want to proceed, you need to just hit the suspend soft key at the bottom here. And that will allow the flight plan and the autopilot to continue on to the next waypoint after the hold. Next up, the map now has traffic, nextrad, and relative topography modes. Quickest way to get to these settings is using the map options button at the bottom. So I hit that soft key. Now let's start by turning on traffic. So hit the leftmost soft key there under traffic to turn it on. And we'll see traffic around us. We'll see all traffic up to 9,900 feet above us and 9,900 feet below us. So for each of the planes we see, it'll show us the altitude relative to us. So that plus 14 means that it's 1400 feet higher than we are. You can see the little triangle representing the plane and the direction that it's traveling. And then the small white arrow shows whether it's trending up or down in altitude. So the down arrow means that it's in a descent. Over here, there's one that's negative 30, so that's 3,000 feet below us. And there's no arrow to the right side of it, so that means it's not climbing nor descending. It's just staying at that altitude. And just because you'll be seeing this a lot, I thought I'd point it out. This little label here that says unres means unrestricted. This is basically an altitude filter setting, and the only one available right now is the unrestricted setting. That setting is where we get the rule for 9,900 feet above and 9,900 feet below. So we may see in the future some more options available there to filter the traffic. Next, you can turn on NextRad by just hitting the NextRad soft button at the bottom. And this will reveal precipitation on the map in a 150 nautical mile radius around your current location. So to the northwest, you can see we have some precipitation on our way to our destination. Green means light. Gold means medium or moderate, red is heavy, and there is also a fourth magenta color, which means severe. 
There's also now a new map type called relative topography. So by default, it's in topography, but if you click this, it'll change to relative topography. So this will show the topography relative to your current altitude. So here, as I'm descending, you can see it revealing the mountainous areas around us. You can also hit this legend button in the bottom right to turn on this legend that shows in the bottom right corner that describes the different colors you'll see in this mode and as well in the normal topography mode. All of these modes are also available on the map HSI button on the PFD. So if you have the inset map or the HSI map turned on, you can turn on traffic, relative topography mode, and NEXRAD and see all of that on your inset or your HSI map on the PFD. What's nice about relative topography mode on the inset map is it's kind of a little mini radio altimeter if you don't actually have one because it'll show you when you're 500 feet AGL when it turns red. All right, now moving over to the PFD, we now have an ADF mode that's functional. So if you like to use non-directional beacons for some reason, you can click on the ADF button at the bottom there to open the ADF panel. Here you can use the FMS knobs, the inner and outer knobs will let you dial in your NDB frequency. And then you can hit the enter button to swap and activate that frequency. Once you do that, go down to the PFD options and enable a bearing for ADF. Otherwise you won't be able to see it on your HSI. So now that I've enabled it, you can see it shows us the bearing to the beacon and also that teal colored arrow on the HSI is pointing to the beacon as well. And lastly, there are a bunch of new map decluttering options. So the first one is a declutter preset that's at the bottom of the MFD. It's also on the PFD, so it says detail all by default. And if you click through that, it'll cycle through a few different presets of varying levels of decluttering, one being the most decluttered. And then independently of that, there are a ton of new declutter settings under the menu button. So if you hit menu, and then on map settings there, hit enter. And now there are a bunch of new settings here for all the new features we've gone over. I'm just going to look at the ones under the aviation submenu or group here. So here you can see options for large, medium, and small airports, intersections, NDBs, and VORs. You can either turn all of these points on or off completely, or if you leave them on, you can use this range option to decide at which map zoom level and lower will they appear. So here I turn small airports and intersections down to 10 nautical miles to get rid of them at my current level of 25. If I zoom down to 10 nautical miles or lower, you can see that they show up. So this is a way to declutter the map based on your zoom level. And what I would do is just come in here and make these tweaks as you see clutter problems. So in this case, I fix those two issues and I'll just move on and keep flying. And if I run into more clutter problems, I'll just revisit that menu and tweak those range settings until I get it just right for me. This was a massive update for the NXI, so I hope you guys found this video useful. I'm really excited for this update and can't wait for the next one. We'll see more and more of these features come alive every couple weeks or so. And uh, I just want to give it a shout out to the working title team just because of all the hard work they're putting in. This mod is awesome and it's just going to get better and better. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.